And now only a week ago, Peter Moore took the stage in Santa Monica, California for Microsoft's E3 press event. The Brit played some rock band and promised that the Xbox 360 would be without a doubt the winner of this holiday season. Actually, check that. He said this generation. But now, a mere seven days later, the man in charge of the 360 and the Games for Windows division has decided to move on to greener, greener pastures, namely... EA Sports. Now, ironically, he'll be replaced by Don Matrick, the former president of EA, but one has to wonder, with the face and perhaps the arm of the Xbox gone, how will this affect the 360s standing in the console wars? You can tattoo this if you want. It's the loop. My guest tonight, editor-in-chief for Kotaku.com, who broke this very story today. Brian Crescente is here. And G4's very own, Adam Sessler. Welcome back to The Loop, everybody. All right, Brian, I'd love to start with you. I mean, this was your baby. You broke it. You tell me, from your perspective, is more jumping ship from Microsoft, or was he forced to walk the plank? No, I think that this was a, a decision he made on his part. I don't think he was forced out of the company. Um, I, I think that for two reasons. One, I, I really do believe that... Uh, his family and his desire to be back in the Bay Area is, is something that really played a part in this. But also, EA gave him bags and bags of money to go there. Adam, do you agree with that? I mean, I, yeah, yes, we've, we've I heard of satchels to. with dollar signs on them, but uh, do you think he was forced? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, three rings of death notwithstanding, I mean, he's only been good for that company. He's been a wonderful spokesman. And if really, if you look at the success of the 360 compared to the Xbox, which he oversaw, he really has helped them out a lot. I can't see why they would really push him out. Now, Brian, you spoke with uh, Robbie Bach, the president of entertainment and devices at Microsoft. What did he have to say about Mr. Moore's departure? Well, he was adamant, again, that it was a personal decision. Um, I pointed out that the timing isn't exactly great because you've got this announcement just weeks ago that uh, they're extending the warranty and that it, uh, well, I don't think they actually announced it, but we all know that there are manu uh, manufacturing problems, hardware problems with the 360. Um, but he says it has nothing to do with that. And frankly, if it did have something to do with that, my guess is they would, they'd wait a little bit because this news is so fresh. Sure. Adam, would you agree with that? I mean, how terrible is the timing, not just coming right off of E3, but with the hardware difficulties and the warranty issues that they've been having? I think it is very unfortunate because when I first heard the news, I thought, oh, wow, there is some, some sort of you know, relationship between these two things. Upon closer inspection, I don't think it had anything to do with that. If you really consider the fact also that you know, these large executive transfers, they don't happen in 36 hours. You know, they do take a while. And, prob and ob obviously, they, they wouldn't do it before E3. I don't know why they had to do it so soon afterwards but there must be something behind the scenes that isn't that suspicious right. that is motivating this. But Brian, I'm sure you've seen the, the, the fanboy posts or the anti-fanboy posts online that say, well, hey, you know, Microsoft, they didn't impress at E3. They focused on the holiday. It's clearly a bad decision. They're throwing out questionable stock news stories, you know, the sale of certain stock. I mean, is there something going on here? Is there even a possibility or a potential, or are you completely denying that yourself now? No, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think they've had a, a sort of short run of bad luck. Um, I don't think they're connected. I, I just don't see, again, you know, uh, when I talked to Robbie Bach, he said that this is something that they'd been talking about for a while. Sounds like they sort of found out about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, it does not sound like something sure. that, like, you know, just yesterday they said, okay, you know, you're out of here, you better go get another job. And, like, EA doesn't have that much money sitting around to just create a position so quickly. Sure. Now, I mean, again, Peter Moore is going to EA. He's going to do some stuff with EA Sports. Adam, what, what do you think uh, Peter Moore's influence could be on the brand and on the games that we're seeing out of EA? Yeah, it's funny. When I first heard I thought, well, that's an odd choice. But really, he came out of Reebok when he was at the Dreamcast for the launch in 1999. One of their biggest games, if not their biggest game, was NFL 2K, right, 2K which is was one huge. of the most seminal football games ever. He really has overseen that. And despite him being British, I think he likes American sports. <laughs> and he really might bring something very fresh to all those sports titles, which really are getting a little bit crusty and long right. in the tooth these days. Well, you know, Brian Riccatello from EA said himself that the only time they were really scared of anybody was when Peter Moore was in charge over at Sega doing the sports thing. But who does EA have to be afraid of now? Like, why, why a move like this at this point? Do they just need a, a face for the EA sports brand? 
You know, it's funny. I, I know that Peter Moore must be more than a face, but I think to gamers, that's what he is. And he brings a lot of sizzle. I mean, he gets very excited about what he does, and he's a great pitch man. And EA really needs that. They have solid games, but they don't have uh, the best rep, I think, among hardcore gamers. So I think there's a good chance he can sort of win them over for EA. Well, what about Don Matrick? I mean, because we know that, you know, he used to work at EA. We understand that he obviously knows what he's doing, but he also did Test Drive back in 87, so he gets plenty of credit for me. But if you're a 360 owner right now, Brian, are you? Are you worried uh, for the future or the longevity of the brand? No, I mean, I'm not worried about the longevity. I, I am wondering, you know, is he going to be the face of Microsoft? I mean, they've always had a face for, I'm sorry, for the 360. Mm-hmm. They had Jay Allard. They had uh, Peter Moore. And now, is, is he going to be the face? He doesn't, on, on my quick interview with him, he doesn't sound like he's quite as... Uh, Got the same sizzle as, I, as I, Peter Morris. I completely agree with you, Brian. Ex- excellent, <laughs> well, excellently tiptoed there, Brian. I mean, all right, Adam, you agree. What does Don need to do right away? Then is it is it henna tattoos or oh, strange piercings? I think oh. no. I think Don is perfectly suited for the job. I don't know if he's going to revel in the spotlight like Seamus, like Jay, and like Peter Moore. He knows his games very well. Remember, he also was at EA when they decided for EA and, and Microsoft to finally allow those games to go on Xbox Live. Right. He knows what he's doing. I think he has the welfare of the company in his mind, and I'm very curious to see what's going to happen very soon. All right, well, let's play the conspiracy theory game very quickly then. Uh, Brian, I'll start with you. Are we going to see a, a product recall for the 360? I mean, this isn't forecasting that something major is going to happen and Peter was jumping ship, right? Uh, we, we might. I don't think it's connected to Peter Moore. I think the real question, though, is what tattoo is Peter Moore going to get to cover up his Halo 2 tattoo? Oh, uh, good, good question. All right, Adam. Army of two, of course. Is, uh, <laughs> it's so obvious. <laughs> is, uh, you know, are we going to see EA Sports games going exclusive to the 360 anytime soon because of this? No, I don't think that's going to happen, but you have to consider the fact that there is a very strong relationship now between EA Sports and the Xbox 360, and those games are already skewing to the 360. Sony's already said some nice things about Peter Moore. Right. They may have to work a little bit harder to get better cooperation. Or 60 frames a second. Brian, yeah. last conspiracy theory to you, sir. Uh, maybe a Microsoft buyout of EA. Could that happen? Uh, I, I'm sure they have the money, but I'm, I'm assuming that EA doesn't have the interest. All right, let's go to the final word. When will we see Moore's effect on EA? Is it not going to be until Madden 2012, or are we going to see it instantly? Adam, we'll start with you. I think this time next year. You think this time next year? Yeah. Brian, what do you think, sir? Yeah, I could see him at next E3 pitching Madden. I can definitely see that. Do you think he'll have one of the Madden championship rings and make everybody kiss it? <laughs> he'll have them on, on his toes, I think. Yeah, the, Madden, <laughs> the cleat cleat ring achievements. All right, I want to thank you guys. Thank you, Adam and Brian, for keeping thank us you. in the loop. And Brian, congrats again on breaking such an awesome story. Thanks. We appreciate your time. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.